what's up guys welcome back to the channel my name is Travis and welcome back to another video uh, today we're going to be answering the question when should I start dosing nitrates and phosphates in my reef tank now some of you guys might be saying well that's a pretty easy answer if you have a zero or near zero nitrates and phosphates ideally you should start dosing or feeding more to elevate those levels well it's not always as cut and dry as that. And that's what I want to talk about in this situation because some of you guys are dosing when you shouldn't be because there's other situations and things that you should be doing uh, and other issues that you should be addressing before, uh, well, actually contributing to the issue down the road. So when it comes to dosing nitrates and phosphates, uh, first of all, what are they and why would we need them in the first place? Well, to make it very simple, our corals uh, and basically organisms and bacteria and all the things in our, our reef tank require some source of nutrients to be able to thrive and continue to grow. Now, when it comes to um, corals, having proper levels of nitrates and phosphates and just kind of an ideal range for that would be uh, 0 0.07 to 0 0.15 of, or this is PPM, of phosphates and three to five ppm of nitrates. Uh, those are usually a pretty good range to stay within and most corals are pretty happy with that. Now you might wanna move into a little bit higher levels if you have you know, like a lot of soft corals and they just need to be a little bit fluffier. That's another video. But either way, when it comes to uh, those levels, we wanna ideally keep them there so our corals can be happy and they have good coloration and they have the best growth possible, right? Well, what happens is uh, sometimes uh, our reef tanks don't always have those levels. And this could be uh, because we are not feeding enough or vice versa, we're feeding too much and we have algae and cyanobacteria and other things going on in our reef tank that consume these nitrates and phosphates, which then in turn take them away from our corals. And then we start having pale paleness and STN and you know sometimes RTN, which is rapid tissue necrosis and slow tissue necrosis, which is common with acroporas. And you know, that's another video in itself. Try not to make this uh, too complicated, but either way, um, so ideally we, we want our levels to be within those ranges so our corals will be happy. Very simple. Now, uh, a lot of people ask me when I should start dosing uh, or if I should start dosing if I have cyanobacteria or hair algae in the tank. Well, the simple answer to that is no. Uh, if you have uh, cyanobacteria or you have hair algae in the tank, that means you already have elevated nitrates and phosphate levels in the tank. Now, granted, your corals might be paling out because they're not able to consume those nutrients because these other things like the hair algae and the cyanobacteria are already consuming these levels within the water column. That way, and, and basically they're starving out your coral. So in that instance, which is actually one of the most common uh, things that happen, uh, you should go ahead and address those two issues first. So one, you need to remove the cyanobacteria. And this is a daily thing. This isn't like once a week I feel like doing it. You need to get in there and actively siphon out cyanobacteria. Um, you can uh, do it via water change. You can put it in a filter sock. You, either way, you need to get the cyanobacteria out. You can increase the flow. You can even go as far as using something like ChemiClean, which I've used in the past and been pretty successful with. Just make sure you follow the directions, of course, with all this stuff based on your water volume. And it's better to underdose any kind of chemical opposed to uh, even at the recommended or above. So make sure, you know, just to be safe, you can underdose that stuff. Either way, you want to address these issues first. So removing that cyanobacteria, getting it out of the tank, making sure that it's no longer consuming the uh, phosphates within the water column. That way you get a better idea of what your levels really are. And you need, and that way you can uh, know for sure if you need a dose or if you just need to let the tank kind of stabilize and lower phosphates over time. Or if you need to add something like GFO to help re uh, bring those uh, nutrients down. Now, when it comes to green hair algae, which is also very common, if, you, if your rocks are fluffy or you got long strands of hair algae or just algae in general, then that means you have some kind of elevated nitrates in the, in the tank. Uh, of course, algae uses nitrates and phosphates, but primarily we're talking about nitrates here. Um, you have elevated nitrates. Now, where that might be coming from, maybe you overdose nitrates or phosphates at one point. Maybe you're overfeeding. You know, maybe you don't have a good skimmer system. Maybe you have too many fish. There's so many different factors that contribute to the excess nutrients in our tank. But the simple fact is, is that if you have green hair algae or algae of some sort, you have elevated nitrates and possibly phosphates in the tank. So you again, you need to address that before you consider dosing. So what I would do is, uh, if you just have algae in the tank, try to mainly remove that stuff as much as possible. Try to get in there and pull that out. You can uh, add a cleanup crew, hermit crabs. You, if you have tangs, the tangs will pick out of that kind of stuff. But you need to address that stuff first. Now, if you've gone through all of that and you're still having issues with hair algae, then consider doing uh, water changes to help bring the nutrients down a little bit quicker. Uh, do a little bit more wet skimming on your skimmer or just make sure your skimmer is rated for your system. Um, now, wet skimming allows you to pull out more nutrients a little bit quicker. And uh, at that point, 
those nutrient levels should come down and stabilize. Uh, one thing to also consider is if you're having elevated nutrients in your tank, uh, either nitrates or phosphates, look at what you're feeding. Uh, for me, I get elevated phosphates quite often because I feed a lot of uh, plant material in my homemade food. So just make sure that if you're, you're, you know, if you're feeding pellets and stuff like that, that you're not overfeeding and that you're removing that food if the fish don't eat it so it doesn't have a chance to break down. So a lot going on there. Trying to, I'm already five minutes in, trying to keep this under 10. Uh, anyways, so... Yes, your corals are pale. Yes, you have zero nitrates and zero phosphates. And you're like, man, I should really start dosing. I'm on the edge of dosing. I don't want my corals to die, but I have cyanobacteria or the overflow has cyano and hair algae in it. What should I do? You need to address those issues first. You need to make sure that you get proper levels in your tank. Now, once you get the levels down, you need to make sure like that they're consistent. You don't want to just plummet your nutrients down to zero and then expect to dose a bunch and bring them back up. Those fluctuations are going to cause problems with your coral, especially SPS. Torts in general do not like uh, bouncing around nutrients. They, they just don't. Trust me, I've, I've wiped out a lot of them playing that game. Um, so make sure you bring them down. If you want to bring them down, don't do anything too crazy. Don't overdose GFO. Don't do no pox or anything like that to rapidly bring those nutrients down because you're going to cause issues. So you want to naturally do it. You want to find the source. And I've talked about this many times, finding the source of the nutrients. So you want to bring that down and then see where the tank stabilizes at. If you find that, you know, your, your corals start going back, the coloration's fine, then you don't ultimately need a dose. But if you're down at zero, you don't have any cyanobacteria, you don't have any hair algae, then yes, that would be a point where you need to start dosing. Uh, then you would, again, you would want to go slow over time, see how the tank adjusts to it, uh, keep an eye on your alkalinity. That's going to be a separate video talking about how you need to focus on your alkalinity when dosing nitrates and phosphates because you will get a fluctuation. It's just going to happen. So, uh, yeah. Is there anything else I want to dose here? I, I'm going to watch this video again to make sure I covered everything. Uh, but either way, uh, it's not always cut and dry when it comes to dosing. You can't just have zero near zero and start dosing and think everything okay, is okay. And you have cyanobacteria in the overflow and you have hair algae on the back of your rocks. You adding those nitrates and phosphates are just going to further cause problems. That's it. They're going to consume them before the coral gets them. And then you're going to have more hair algae and more cyano and you're just going to continue to starve your coral. So, yep. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. Definitely don't mind you guys helping out with the videos. And again, I'll make another one talking about how to uh, keep an eye on your alkalinity and things you should be looking out for when dosing nitrates and phosphates because you will uh, get fluctuations. But anyways, if you guys want to support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. Buy, buy three, get one free on 3D printing. Uh, my 40% sale was done a few days ago, so I don't think I have that anymore. But either way, it is buy three, get one free on 3D printing. And, of course, I do have nitrates and phosphates if you're interested. That's it. Peace.